Good morning, church. Welcome to Small Gift Baptist Church on this wonderful Sunday, the, is it the 16th today? The 16th of April, 2023. What a glorious morning. I know it's raining, but it's a glorious morning because we have Christ in our life. I want to um, just read Psalm 118, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And in Psalm 118, his love endures forever. is repeated five times. We're all going through our different seasons, whether it's spring, summer, autumn, winter. Just remember, God is good. His love endures forever. Worship to Good morning, church. Good morning to you all. How are you all feeling? Feeling good? Maybe not. We've come into this house and gathered in his name, haven't we? To worship him. So that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to make that a prayer. So if you stand with me and we just commit this time uh, together. To God. Yes, Lord. Please stand. Please stand. Lord, we know that you are with us right now. Lord, we thank you for your presence with us today. Lord, whatever you have us learn today, we pray, Lord, that it will be embedded in our hearts as we leave this place. Lord, as we gather together, we want to praise you. Lord, we want to forget about ourselves and concentrate on you. Lord, we want to learn more of you and be like you. So Lord, we ask Lord, that you enable us to learn more about you today. Enable us to forget about ourselves as we gather together today.
we're doing things slightly different um, from today. So the next, I'd like to ask Fern if you'd come and do the prayers, please. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's a lovely Sunday morning. Different seasons, as Lillian said, but we give God plants for every season. We need the rain for the plants to flourish, to get ready for the summer. Let us pray. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a wonderful privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, I am reminded of your great power and love. You are the creator of all things. There is nothing beyond your reach. You are the source of our life, the giver of every gift. You are the one who can heal our brokenness and restore our souls. I pray that you will show your compassion and mercy to those who are suffering right now. Comfort those who are grieving. Give them a brighter hope for tomorrow. Strengthen those who are facing difficult challenges and help them to overcome every obstacle in their path. Provide for those who are in need and give the resources they require. Lord, I pray that you will bring peace to our troubled world. Heal the division that separates us and help us to see each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Give us the wisdom to know how to love one another and to work together, dear Lord, for the good of us all. I ask that you would bless this world with your grace and mercy and direct leaders in the right direction so especially this country, Lord, will come to some decision. Father, I bring to you the list on our prayer line. Remember the family of Renella, Lord, as they lay to rest her daughter, Diane, in Wednesday of this week. Remember Renella's son, who has been diagnosed with a heart condition. Take control, dear Lord, and let your healing take place. Remember Ricky's sister in Jamaica, Jennifer, who has got fluid on her lungs. Help her breathing to settle down, dear Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending Omar home from hospital, also Del Kerr. And oh Lord, at this moment, remember Anita, Dee, and Buddy, Ramesh's family, as they continue to mourn his loss. Also his wife, Sabita, and their children, who are in-laws to Myrtle and Kenson. Lord, we know without you, we would be nothing. Mrs. Rose is in our presence this morning, Lord. We ask her to bless her and keep her. Relieve her of the aches and pains that she's having as she prepared to lay her husband, Mr. Rose, to rest on the 27th of this month. We pray, Lord, that all she's going with all that she's doing and preparing will go according to plan. And at this moment, congregation, if there's anyone on your heart and you would like to lift them up to the Lord, just shout their names. Lord, you have heard those names. We thank you for answered prayers. Even before the names are called, Lord, we know that your prayers will be answered. 
These verses we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.
Ricky, did you know that? <laughs> Didn't tell me before the service. So, um, I think I may have got you out of jail there, Ricky. Um, so it's Hannah's birthday on Friday as well. Have a good time Friday. All the very best to you. And then, it'll be my birthday on Saturday. Um, Lord God, we are your people. By your power, we are created. By your love, we have grown and come to know you. By your mercy, you are saved. We bless you as you continue to be our Father, our protector, and guide. Your faithfulness continues through all generations, and we trust in you as your love endures forever. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We will now say the Lord's Prayer.
So I was not meant to leave today. It was supposed to be Sharon. And Sharon, if you are listening, I pray that you uh, are healed in Jesus' name. A speedy recovery. So some of the songs, the majority of the songs were chosen by um, Sharon. And uh, yes, I have the opportunity to change them, but I, I, I'm going to keep these songs because there's a hymn that I haven't sung in, in many years. So we're going to sing that hymn um, now. And also, I added to, to uh, just one song I've added. But the, the hymn we're going to sing now is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. To his feet, thy tribute bring, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, evermore his praises sing. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him.
prays with us, the God of grace. We're going to continue to praise that name.
Father, for this precious gift of your love, all for our sins. And Lord, we stand amazed. We stand amazed. And at this time, we just pray for the children and the young people as they go to their Sunday school. Bless you as you go. We pray that you will learn more of God. Thank you. 
Heavenly Father, as we gather in your house today, may you bless us today with the word she is about to share, us, share with us. And may you bless us and, and nurture us. May we trust in everything that is being said. In your Jesus' name, Amen. morning church. The last time I preached to you I uh, explained to you uh, the meaning of the word shalom which we can find in the Old Testament and uh, it's a Hebrew word and is usually translated into English as peace but it means so much more than peace and we talked about what it exactly meant. So, um, it, there is no English equivalent of Shalom. That's why we need to look at it more widely. If we could uh, have the first slide up, please, that would be great. So, it said it means all of these things, all three bullet points. I can't read that up there, so I'm going to have to read it from here. It means peace, harmony, a lack of strife, a lack of conflict, a balanced community where there is no injustice or oppression, well-being, completeness, wholeness, soundness, warmth, joy, true friendship, a totally integrated life with health of body, heart and mind attuned to nature, open to others, in joy with God. And it also means social justice, dignity, independence and freedom. Harmony, contentment, in harmony with nature. I put those up there again in case some of you were not here last time I'd, I uh, explained about Shalom in our lives. Uh, now, the Old Testament's written in Hebrew, and that's a Hebrew word. But there is also the New Testament is also is not written in Hebrew. It's mainly written in Greek. And so, um, and yet we we see the word peace appearing an awful lot of times in the New Testament, don't we? Uh, is it the same as shalom? Is it this wider meaning? And it is. The word they use in the Greek is irene, which also means all of this that you've got up on the wall. So every time you see peace in your Bible, it means all of this. And I set you a challenge last time to look at every instance of the word peace in your Bibles and to see whether seeing it in this wider context it meant anything different, whether, whether it opened up the Bible to you more than usual, whether you sat, found yourself reading the word with a different meaning, more deeply. Now I wonder how you got on with that. Has it opened up some new insights to you? And I left you with a text. In the next slide you can see it. Um, it was a text from James, chapter 3, 
verses 17 to 18, where it said, Peacemakers, or shalom makers, who sow seeds of peace, seeds of shalom, raise a harvest of righteousness. Have you been able to sow seeds of shalom in your lives, I wonder? You know, when I'm preparing a sermon to preach, very often what happens is that I find the Bible words start uh, speaking to me as well. And uh, as I've prayed about sowing seeds of shalom in my life, I found myself becoming more accepting of people, more loving. It's easy, so easy to be critical, isn't it? Rejecting, judgmental. Easy to be those things. Uh, not so easy to sow seeds of shalom. And this week I found the Lord leading me to another text which I'm going to share with you. It's in, in the next slide. And this is a word from Paul to the Colossians in Colossians 3, verse 15. It says this, May the word of Christ dwell in you richly. I wonder what that means. Well, I think it describes people who are so full of the word of Christ that their entire being is affected by it. They are different people. They are followers of Jesus, followers of the word. And their whole nature is affected by it. And I think that Paul, when he wrote these words, was clearly linking them to peace, shalom, irene. Because in the verse before that, in Colossians uh, 3, verse 14, he talked about peace and pe being peacemakers too. And I believe that the James text about sowing seeds of shalom can also be seen in this context. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Sowing seeds of shalom, the word of God dwelling in us so deeply and richly that we're wanting to be an instrument of its spreading abroad, of bringing about the harmony of shalom the justice, and all of these other things that are in that original definition. So now today, I'm not going to preach the same sermon I did last time. I want to bring another aspect of Shalom to you today. Uh, so let's have a look at the uh, first slide again, perhaps the, the, the big long definition. Thanks. Uh, the, we're going to look at the second bullet point, where it says, Shalom means a totally integrated life with health of body, heart and mind, attuned to nature, open to others, in joy with God. So we're going to look at health and healing today. Health of body, heart and mind. That rings very nicely too with the other text. May the word of God dwell in you richly. Now if the word of Christ does dwell in us richly, does that mean that we'll be more healthy? Well, people have done research on this, you know, and uh, they found that people who have a faith are more healthy than those who don't. 
So there is a little bit of evidence of that. Uh, but I think you and I, we all know that if God is living in us, we're feeling much better about ourselves and about the world in general. So let's look at another text now. This is from Exodus 15. And it says... Uh, yeah, this is a word that was given to the people of Israel by Moses. God had given him this word to tell them, to teach them, to speak to them. They had, it was not long after they had escaped from slavery in Egypt and crossed the Red Sea and they were in the wilderness. And this is the word that God brought to them. He said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his eyes. If you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, that means letting the word of God, the word of Christ, dwelling in you richly. If you do all of that, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord, who heals you? I am the Lord who heals you. Let's think about that sentence for a moment. I am. Where else can you see the words I am? They'll, well, you'll find a whole lot of instances in John's Gospel. When Jesus said, I am, he said, I am lots of things. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. And there's another, another four of them. He, Jesus said, I am all of these things. And I believe that Jesus identified with the I am from Exodus as well. With that I am, I am the Lord who heals you. We can see why, why that's the case by reading Matthew chapter 11. If you've got a Bible, you may want to turn to that. Matthew 11, and I'm going to start at verse 2. When John, and this is John the Baptist, when John was in prison, he, and when he heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect someone else? And Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Now, Jesus answered that question not by teaching something. He answered the question by talking about his ministry, his healing ministry. And I believe that was him identifying with I am the Lord who heals you. He often said things like in his parables that were in different ways that left people to guess what he was saying and it led them into God's word more. So I believe that uh, when he answered John the Baptist's question, he was also identifying with the statement in Exodus, which says, I am the Lord who heals you. So God wants to heal us. And why does he want to heal us? Because he loves us. It's as simple as that. We've been praising him, thanking him for his love this morning. It's very simple that he loves us. Maybe you don't believe that. But 
but he is a very loving father. And the reason why I know that is because there's a, a story in the, in the Old Testament, in 2 Kings 5, about a man called Naaman. And Naaman had leprosy. And uh, he went to, he was sent to see Elisha the prophet to be healed. And when he got to Elisha's house, uh, Elisha didn't come out himself, he sent his servant with a message. And he said, you need to go and wash yourself in the River Jordan seven times and then you'll be healed. And Naaman was very upset about that. He thought it was beneath him to go and do that in the River Jordan. But the friends who were around him, they, they encouraged him to go and do it. And so he did. He went and washed himself seven times in the River Jordan and his leprosy was healed. So Naaman was a very arrogant man. He thought it was beneath him. And yet, despite his arrogance, God still healed him. I heard a story last week about a man called John, John Graham Lake. He was an American missionary who lived at about the uh, beginning of the last century. And uh, he was uh, about to go back to the mission field, he, which was at that time in South Africa. Um, just at the time as the bubonic plague broke out. <clears throat> and um, a quarter of the population had died from it. And yet he still went. And he and his team were, volunteered their help. Oh. They were helping visit people in their homes. They were helping with carrying out the bodies to be buried and to bury them. All kinds of things they were doing. And one of the medical people there at that time said to him, what, what asked him, what precautions are you taking? And uh, John Graham Lake said this, he said, brother, it is the law of the spirit of life in Christ. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. I believe that just as long as I keep my soul in contact with the living God, so that his spirit is flowing within me, into my soul and body, that the germs will never attach themselves to me, for the Spirit of God will kill them. That was his statement. How great his belief was and his faith. But some may say, well, that was just stupidity. I believe that it was an example of that text, may the word of Christ dwell in you richly. It was having a protective effect on him. But I'm not sure that his approach would have gone down very well here three years ago. When the coronavirus pandemic started in this country. When we're all wearing masks, washing our hands all the time, using hand gel, social distancing from each other, and closing our churches. Now we had more medical knowledge than they did a century ago. So we did take precautions. And yet I don't know if anybody else felt the same as me, but I did have a very strong sense of the Lord's protection over me at that time. He took my fear away.
And I began to think that if it was my time to leave this world, to die, then the Lord would take me anyway, because I do believe everybody has a right time to go. The Lord would take me anyway, and there was nothing I could do to change that. So I might as well get on with my life and keep seeking what the Lord wanted to do with, through me and with me for the rest of the days that I have here. To find out whether he had a purpose for me still here. But I did feel tremendous grief. I felt grief for those we had lost, as I'm sure each of you have. But I also felt grief at our church being closed. And that's one reason why I was one of the first to come back when we opened again. But one of, one of the things that the pandemic has done, a lot of awful things, hasn't it? One of the things it has done in this church is that it has scuffed, scuppered the healing ministry we once had. You know, just as just before the lockdown occurred, we were about to have a, a training session for people in the ministry team in the hope that we, we wanted to increase the number of people in the, the ministry team that we have. But that uh, training session never happened because the lockdown occurred a few days after we had that meeting. And here we are now, three years later, with people only coming forward for prayer occasionally, and with our ministry team pretty depleted as well. And I believe this is something we need to look at as we start getting the life of this church back together. And why not do it today? Why not do that today? Because our God is the one who heals us. The God is the one who loves us. And he wants to heal us of all the stress we went through. The loss we went through. And I believe that he wants to do that for each of us here today. And Jesus healed people using many different methods. Sometimes he put his fingers in people's ears when they, if they were deaf. Another time he spat on his hands and made clay from the mud uh, and put it on people's eyes if they were blind. And other times he took somebody in their sick bed by the hand and lifted them up. Other times he just said, take up your bed or walk. But most of the time, he healed people by laying hands on them. And you can see that in Luke chapter 4. The next slide, please, uh, Dylan. Luke chapter 4, where it says this. When the sun was setting, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. So Jesus did the laying on of hands, and that's what we usually do here when we're praying for somebody's healing. So we're going to do something like that now. The ministry team, those of us who are still here, will uh, come and pray for you if you would like prayer. And uh, in this ch church we have a tradition of praying for people for other things as well as physical illness. So if there are other things you want to be prayed about, just tell the person in the ministry team, the person who is praying for you. 
Now I've put together a list of a whole lot of things that uh, you may want to pray for. If we can have this, yes, it's on these two slides. I'm not sure if you can read those, so I'm going to read them myself. You may want to ask for more shalom in your life. If your life situation is pretty chaotic at the moment, you may want to ask for more shalom. You may want to ask that the word of Christ will dwell in you more richly. You may want to ask for healing of, of grief or loss that you may have suffered during the pandemic or recently. You may want to ask God to help you to forgive somebody. Yes, somebody who has wronged you and you're finding it difficult to forgive them. You may wish to ask for the healing of emotional wounds. We call that inner healing. When I first came to this church, there was an awful lot of inner healing that needed to be done in my life. And my life has changed as a result of receiving prayer in this church. You may wish to ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Or refreshing of the Holy Spirit in your life. You may want to ask God about bringing a miracle about in your life, in a situation that you, you have in your life that's pretty impossible and uh, you'd like to see a change, a miracle. You may want to ask for strength. Strength to do something you think, you believe that God wants you to do, but you're not sure you've got the courage to do it. You may want to ask God to heal somebody who's not here, somebody else that you're worried about. You may feel that maybe God wants you to join the ministry team if we're going to focus on healing more in the future and you would like to be a part of that. If you'd like to have prayer for that. You may want to ask God to forgive you for something that you've done and you can't forgive yourself. You just want to ask God to forgive you and to ask you to forgive yourself for whatever it was. You may want to ask God to change you so that you will be more like Jesus. So if any of those ring true for you or if you have another need for healing, I want to ask you to come forward to the front and the ministry team to be available. And uh, the, the worship team is uh, going to come and play through some music while we do that. So, thank you, worship team.
Thank <laughs> you.